Welcome back to Houdini Isn't Scary Project Part 2 Intermediate Materials and Lighting. In Part 1, we went over how to create a background, a pipe, and our platform. So what we're going to be doing moving forward is adding the ball, and we need to give everything a material, we need to add some lighting, and then we need to get into our dynamics. So we're actually going to be doing the materials now because we want to focus on the dynamics when we get there. Right? We don't want to have to focus on how everything looks later. And in this particular project, it's very much a viable method to do your materials now. So we're going to do our materials now. Let's get straight into it. Back in Houdini, we have our platform, our pipe and our background from the file where we left off last. And you can download this file down below. Feel free to go and grab it and just continue from there. Now, what I want to do is add some lighting. And the type of lighting that we're going for in here is a very soft lighting, so not very harsh shadows. And so you could sort of think perhaps that early evening, late afternoon sort of lighting. Now, I know that we don't have any materials yet, but it's often not a bad idea to do your lighting early on because oftentimes if your lighting looks good, before you have materials, when you do add materials, it just looks a bit better. And that's not always the case, but in this case, we're doing quite a simple setup, so we can do our lighting right now. So the first thing we're going to add is a camera. We can just go over to our lights and camera shelf tools, control and click on camera. And we're going to place this at about 2.2 on the X axis, 0.5 on the Y axis, and maybe zero on the Z axis. We're then also going to change our rotation. We'll do zero, 90, and zero. And we can actually maybe pull this out a bit further. So maybe to about 2.5, and then bring it further up to about 0.75. Lower, 0.6. Yeah, so I kind of like that. That doesn't look too bad. And of course, you could also reposition your pipe or your platform, whatever you'd like. Now, let's get into actually adding some light. So we want soft shadows, right? And a good way to do that is to add a light that sort of fills everything so that there's no pitch black area. And how you can do that is by adding an ambient light. So back up on our lights and camera shelf tools, we'll go over to ambient light, control, click on that. By default, it's this gray. We're going to change it to a pure white with a light intensity of 0.2. And if we go over to our render view and select OBJ camera one and click render, it will begin to render and you won't see anything. And that's because ambient light is a perfectly uniform light. So we have no dark areas, we have no light areas. So we can cancel this render, go back to scene view. Now we've added an environment light in the past and we're going to be doing it again. But this time, we're not going to be using an HDRI. Instead, we're going to use what's known as a sky environment map. So go over to the Sky Environment Map tab on your environment light and say Enable Sky Environment Map. And what this does is it actually just creates a gradient in a sphere. So if you go over to the Sky tab, you'll see that there's a color gradient for the sky and a color for the ground. So what this does is it adds a very basic environment light. And if we go back over to Render View and Render again, you can see what that looks like. So quite interesting, right? We have some nice blue tones in here and these sort of beigey colors. And we're now getting an idea of where our shapes are. Our uniform light is no longer removing all of the shadows. Now we can go back to our scene view and we're going to move over to the side of our object over here. So if your camera is facing straight, we're going to move over to the right. And we're going to add a distant light. So go up to your lights and cameras, control, click on distant light. And a distant light almost acts like the sun. So imagine that your sun is coming from this direction, which means that it doesn't actually matter how close it is to an object. Proximity doesn't matter. It's just directional. So now that we have a distant light, let's take a look at our render view. Once again, that looks quite nice. There's only going to be a few things that we change on this distant light, but I'm firstly going to move it up slightly. So switch on your lock, go to your display view and move it up slightly. I want the light to hit it from about here. Great, so now our platform has some nice light hitting it and our pipe has that light over there. And we can also bring it over 
so that the light hits the edges of all of these background faces. And just find a nice area that suits your look. All right, I quite like that. Only thing I'm going to do is drop the exposure to minus one. And then the last light that we're going to add in our scene view is just a spotlight. So switch off your lock on your distance light and move over here. We're going to have a spotlight on our background. So control and click on spotlight, go to render view, and we can just make some adjustments to the spotlight so that it's more against the wall and less against our pipe. Right, so something like this with less exposure, just an exposure of two or three. Yeah, that looks great. So quite simple. So now that our scene is nicely lit up, we can start giving this some materials. So let's cancel this render and we'll unlock, go back to our camera view. And now we can continue. So let's go to our material palette and in our material palette, we'll drag over principal shader and we'll actually drag over a couple of these. So we'll drag over three for now and we'll go rename each one. So here's all three of them. We're going to rename one to platform shader. We'll rename one to background shader. And then we'll also rename one to ball shader. And I haven't created the pipe shader yet because there's something different that I want to show you for those. So now we want some really interesting colors, but which colors are we going to use? Well, if colors aren't really your thing, don't stress. There is a great website that you can go to. It's called coolers.co. And once you get here, you can say start the generator. It's free and it'll start a color generator for you. And the palette that it generates is automatically a bunch of colors that work well together. And if you press spacebar, it'll generate a new color palette for you. And so you can see there's ghost white with lavender gray, Roman silver, and Spanish gray. It's trying to pair colors that look good together. And so if you press spacebar again, you can keep going through different colors. And if there's a particular color that you like, so say you really like this Bondi blue, you can click on it and it'll add that lock. And then you can press spacebar again and it'll only adjust the colors around it and it'll match to this color. So perhaps now you find that you like these, then you can lock these two in place and find two accent colors. So I already have a palette that I'd like to use and I'll be linking this palette down below. And that is this one over here. So I have Carmine Pink, Middle Blue, Maya Blue, Diane Cornflower Blue, and Isabelline. So what you can do is you can grab this value over here. This is a hexadecimal value. So you can double click on it, control and C, and then go back into Houdini. And let's give our platform this color. So we go to our platform shader and we go to the surface tab base color. And in here, this is your hexadecimal value. You can just paste the value that you got from coolers and press enter. Right. So now your color is in here. And now if we go to our object level, we can select our platform, go over to the render tab material, and you can select your platform shader. And it shows up as blue over here. And that's working well. So the only other thing we'll change on here is maybe it's roughness to 0.5. Then we can go over to our background shader, go over to surface, and let's go grab another color. So for this one, we're going to be using this Maya blue. Copy. Back in Houdini. Paste it in here and then grab this and drag it over to your background. We'll also change the background roughness to 0.5 so that it is a bit rougher and the lighting is more diffuse. And now we have our ball. And what we're going to do is go ahead and grab another color. For this, we're going to use the Carmine Pink. Control C, back into Houdini, ball color, paste it into your hex value. And so you'll notice that in here, it's a slightly different shade to in here. And that's just a saturation thing. You can increase the saturation to match up the colors more closely, but we won't be doing that. So we can also drop the roughness on our ball to 0.2. And we don't have our ball yet, but we'll get there. So now with the pipes, what is the issue that we would have if we were to create some materials for it? Well, all of our pieces of our pipe are in a single object. 
So we can't do what we've done with our platform and with our background. Remember, our platform, we went and selected it under the render tab, our platform shader. And for background, we clicked and dragged onto it and it placed it into here. How do we give this two separate shaders for our pipe? Well, let's go over to our material palette and make those two shaders salon. So we'll create two more shaders. This one we'll rename to pipe underscore shader. And this one over here we'll call pipe end underscore shader. Now back in our material palette, we can just change our pipe shader. We'll make this white with a very low roughness, 0.01. And we'll scroll down and over here under transparency, we'll push up our transparency to one. So this actually just turns it into glass. So we have a high transparency that makes it glass with a very low roughness that makes it a very reflective glass so that it doesn't look frosted or anything. Now on our pipe end shader, we can go over to surface and for the base color, we'll just choose a sort of soft gold, maybe a rose gold around there. We'll drop the roughness to 0.01 and this one will make metallic. So click and drag full metallic. Now we have these two shaders, but how do we actually put them onto our pipe? Well, we go to our object level and then we go into our pipe node. And this is why we create groups because now what we can do in here is press tab and type material and drop this material node. And we're actually going to drop two of those so we can drop another material and we can rename one to pipe underscore glass. And we can rename the other one to pipe underscore metallic. Now pipe glass, we need a group for it. So we click on the node, go to group. And over here, we can just select the glass pipe group and the material that we want, we can assign over here. So we want that pipe shader. And then on our pipe metallic, we want the group, which is the pipe end group. That's those pieces at the bottom. The material that we want is of course the pipe end shader. So we can go up and go to our render view, click on render. And look at that. All of our colors are in. We have our glass tube, we have our metal pipe end, and we have these great background panels. And of course you can make changes from here. Perhaps you want to zoom in the camera and bring this pipe down a bit lower. And that's something that I might actually do here. So for our camera, we can bring it in closer. 2.2, 0 0.50, and pipe. We have this transform node, fortunately. So we can select that transform node and bring our pipe down. And so that's looking pretty good. I like the way that looks. And you can play around with a couple of things. But the last thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is put the ball into the scene so that we have it for our next tutorial. So we can drop down a sphere and rename this one to ball setup. Dive inside, set it to a polygon mesh. And then we can scale it down to about 0.2. So a uniform scale of 0.2 should be good. Give it 50 rows and 50 columns, and then drop a transform node, and we can move it up a bit. So on our ball, let's just go ahead and grab our material. We'll go over to the render tab, material, ball shader. Let's take a look and it looks really good. And if you want to actually reduce the harshness of shadows, you can control how heavy a shadow is based on the light that is causing it. And so this light that's on the side over here is because of our distant light. So click on distant light, go over to the shadow tab, and its shadow intensity can be reduced to about 0.2. Right, so everything looks a lot softer now. And so there we have our lights and our materials in place. And then the last thing that we can do is just set up our render output node with the last options that we'll need for rendering. So we can go to our out node on our mantra IPR node. We can name this render underscore out. And now we know that's our render node. We can go over to rendering, enable depth of field and allow motion blur because we will be using that later. And we can go back to our object level. And if you remember how to add depth of field to your camera, go ahead and do that. If not, I'll show you quickly. So you go to your camera, you activate your transform handles, and you look at where your focal point is. And somehow 
it has landed exactly where we want it, but oftentimes it won't. So you can adjust it like this with the transform handle, or if you go over to your sampling, you can adjust your focus distance over here. So we'll set it to two. Right, so that focus distance is right on the ball. And so that's everything that we need for this part. And that means we don't need to worry about materials anymore. In the next part, we can start on dynamics. How cool is that? We're going to start doing some rigid body dynamics. So the ball is going to fall through the pipe. It's going to bounce on our platform twice. And then in the part after the rigid body dynamics section, we're going to do the flip dynamics. So after it bounces twice on the third bounce, we'll switch it to a flip simulation. So it'll turn into a fluid and it'll be held in an invisible container. So all of that's really cool and that's going to be coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Remember, we have information over on our blog post on Patreon. There's more details over there. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. Please consider commenting and subscribing because we will be releasing a lot more of these types of tutorials. And I do hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, let me know. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Until then, keep well. Bye.